This is Jen Judkins with Teaching Forward. In this tutorial video, we're going to take a look at the different options for sharing your screen and try to take away some of the mystery. There are three options for presenting your screen, which include presenting your entire screen, a window, or a Chrome tab. We're going to review each and help you to understand why you may choose one over the other depending on the circumstance. Let's get started. Right now you're looking at my screen with two side-by-side -side windows. The smaller one on the right is a student view. The one on the left that's larger is my teacher screen. I'm going to show you how to present and wanted to leave the student view so you could see how things appear for the student while we do this. If I click present now, I have my three choices. I'm going to start with your entire screen as an option. This one is easy in that it helps you to know what kids are seeing because whatever you can see, that's what the students will see. It will show you a thumbnail of what the screen is going to look like. You have to click it so that a blue box goes around that image and then the share button will appear. Once you click the share button, your screen will switch to present mode. So again, you're viewing the student on the right. So if I switch over things on my screen, they'll appear for the student as well. Now, a couple things to understand when you are presenting your screen. If you click on the People tab over here on the right, and you will see the list of participants, you will appear at the top. When you're presenting, you'll actually appear two times. The first time is typically the, the original one. That's where your uh, camera and microphone are functioning from. So this would be your little uh, webcam picture as well as your voice coming through. And then the second one is appearing just as a result of me sharing my screen and it's titled with my name and your presentation in parentheses. This is a thumbnail image of what the students are seeing. It's helpful to understand that this is happening because at times, students may indicate to you that they cannot see you um, or that your screen appears small, just like all the other thumbnails of the students in the class. If this happens, you'll want to instruct students to hover over where you appear here, um, where it says your presentation, and click the pin to put your presentation on the center part of the screen so it's large and, and you're able to see it and the students are able to see it. Let's take a look at some other presentation options besides the full screen. I'm going to stop sharing and toggle to a new type of presenting. The second one, a window, is typically the one that I would use if I am splitting my screen or using two screens. The reason for this is that if I'm splitting my screen or using two screens, I actually have more than one window, or you'll notice this is a whole window here on the left, and this is another window on the right. These are two separate windows. The word window is different than the word tab. These are different tabs up here, these little uh, individual websites. These tabs appear in this window, and on the right, I only have one tab in this other window. When you select a window, if you have more than one window open, and I do, it will display both windows and I will need to select the one that I want to display. So I'm going to pick this one because this is my teacher window. I'm going to choose share. And then again, if I switch, you'll notice that that's what the student sees. If I change the window again, that changes what the student sees. They no longer see my side-by-side -side windows even though I have two windows open at this time. Let's look at the last option. The last option for sharing that we'll explore is the one for a Chrome tab. You'll notice that it says that it's best for video and anim animation. This is because it actually pulls the computer's audio through to the, to the audience so that there is no delay of audio where it um, usually that would happen when the speaker from your computer is actually being picked up by your computer's microphone. When you use a Chrome tab, it doesn't do this and it helps to provide a better viewing experience for any videos you may be showing. You can use this really anytime and if you're not using two screens or trying to split your windows, 
uh, your monitor into two halves, then this is the easiest option. So I'm going to click a Chrome tab and I'm going to switch to, you'll notice that instead of having two thumbnails, now I have a list of all the websites that I have on display and I can pick the one that I want to share with students. So I'm going to click this one. You'll notice again my student window on the right is showing and when I start to play the video, the audio will come through more clearly for students. The other thing I want to point out to you here is that when you choose this option for sharing, there will be a blue rectangle that appears in the tab that is being displayed to students. If I were to toggle away to a different tab, my students continue to see the tab that I have the blue rectangle indicating. I can always change the tab. It displays at the top and lets me know what I'm currently sharing and I can share this tab instead by clicking this button and you'll notice it switched for the student. This is how Chrome tab sharing works. If I switch tabs, I have to share another, you know, change this here so that it displays differently for the students. Thanks for watching. Check us out online at teachingforward.net. You can subscribe and receive our collection of Google Cheat Sheets, including one for Google Meet.